Enols can also be made from an aldehyde or a ketone by using an acid catalyst. Now, just like we've talked about with base catalysis, you do need to have a catalyst, and that would be either the acid or the base. When you do these types of reactions, you need to make sure that the acid you are using is an oxy acid. If it's a hydrogen halide, the halide may act as a nucleophile in the reaction, so don't use an alkyl or a hydrogen halide. It needs to be an oxy acid when you do this kind of chemistry. And as we've mentioned before, aldehydes, you've only got one alpha carbon with alpha protons. If you have a ketone, it may be symmetrical or asymmetrical. If it's symmetrical, it doesn't matter which proton on which alpha carbon you take. If it's asymmetrical, it's going to matter. You want to watch out if the conditions are hot or cold. Um, there might be some selectivity. You're going to get more than one product as to which enol would be favored. So be aware of that. There would be some kinetic and thermodynamic control if it's an asymmetric ketone. I'm going to use an aldehyde again. The same one I used when we did base. Now just like we talked about with base, by using acid catalyst in water, you may also form a hydrate. That is a possibility. You could protonate that carbonyl oxygen right off the bat, which we're going to do, and instead of having water remove the proton on the alpha carbon, water could act as a nucleophile toward the carbonyl carbon. Both things can happen. There's no reason why they can't. We aren't going to talk about hydrate formation, but be aware that it happens as well. And um, there's really not one favored over the other. They both happen. We're just not going to talk about the hydrate right now, but I want to make sure I point out that it, it has the ability to form. There's no reason why it wouldn't, because these conditions allow you to make two different things. Here is our acid in solution. The carbonyl oxygen will pick up your proton and give electrons back. And by doing so, you will make a protonated aldehyde or ketone. And it does have resonance delocalization of this positive charge. The resonance structure on top is the favored resonance structure because everybody's got an octet there. The one on the bottom, the carbonyl carbon, does not have an octet, so that is the minor contributor to resonance, but there is delocalization of this positive charge. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, water can act as a nucleophile or a base here. If it acts as a nucleophile, you could add to the carbonyl carbon here right now and then deprotonate and make a hydrate. And you can look at that mechanism and review it if you want to. It does happen. The other thing water can do is act as a base and remove a proton from the alpha carbons. Now, the pKa for those protons, depending on what they are, are typically 16, 17, 18, 19, maybe 20. But this is a protonated form, so they are more likely to come off under these conditions because we've stabilized it and made it more acidic. We'd like to get rid of the positive charge. So those alpha protons that we are talking about, I'm drawing in in green, these are the ones that we are concerned with taking. And you can do this from either resonance structure. It does not matter. If you do it from the one on the top, you can remove the alpha proton here. Carbon's more electronegative, so carbon will take that pair of electrons and make a carbon-carbon double bond. As you do, so you break the carbon-oxygen double bond. If you want to do this from the resonance structure down below, take the alpha proton. The electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bond are used to make the carbon-carbon double bond, and you're good. So at the end of the day, you can make an enol. And you've also regenerated your acid catalyst. So you haven't made the solution any more acidic than it was to begin with. And that's just fine.